Hi everyone, this is another Getting Started tutorial and in this particular one I'm going to show you how to change the viewport background, uh, create a small animation with uh, cloud to max and 3D Studio Max. Now what I have in front of me at the moment is a simple point cloud of a crushed vehicle that you can see here and I also have it animated so if I go to the top view and I'll zoom in a bit you'll see that I have a camera here and it's animated along a path and just sort of going around uh, one side of the vehicle. So um, if we want to do some things here like animate the uh, or provide an animation of the viewport then uh, there's a simple way to do this in 3D Studio Max. Now um, I'm not talking about full rendering like where you actually just hit the render button and uh, it renders out each frame. One thing that we've noticed is that oftentimes the viewport looks very very good and you want to capture exactly what's in the viewport but when you go to render it's not giving you exactly the same sort of look or effect. So what we've come up with here is a way to render out the viewport and get the look uh, that you want or that you see actually um, right in front of you. So uh, first thing is to change the viewport background because oftentimes the default gray here is not so desirable. So we're going to go into views and we're going to go to viewport background, viewport background, files, and I've, I've got four different ones here. These are 800 by 600 resolution. It, it can be, you know, larger is probably better. Uh, it will get matched to your viewport, but uh, you can use, you know, blue, black, whatever you like. So I'll just choose a, a black background for now and hit OK. And you see here that it shows up now. Um, if for some reason this does not show, just double check under viewport background here that show background is checked. Um, I, when you change the uh, viewport, viewport backgrounds, uh, usually it automatically uh, shows. So um, now one thing you'll notice here is that up in the top left hand corner you see this text. Now at the moment we don't have any way to sort of get rid of this particular text so there's a couple of options you have. One is to uh, crop it out or what you can do is use a background that um, will cover it. So we have a, um, a just a gray sort of gradient background that I use uh, right here. And you'll see that it's the same color, almost the same color as the text up here. So it's very difficult to see. So uh, we use this. Now, if you have part of the point cloud that's dark that goes over this, you will see it. So if I move this over like that, you'll see that it actually shows up again. So it's good if it's in an area that um, is sort of uh, not going to be used as part of the animation. So anyway, uh, I've changed the background now and I can render this out if I like. And the way to do that, and I believe that we have another tutorial for that, is to go to Views, Grab Viewport, and Create Animated Sequence File. So we click on this, and looking at some of the settings here, Active Time Segment, so I'm going to go from 0 to 100. Frame Rate, I'm going to render out every single frame at a rate of 30 frames per second. And the size of the output, I'm going to render out at 640 by 480, but you can change this value to get a different size. Now, if you're going to be doing something, and just, just a note, but if you're going to be rendering to or using a video package or you're going to be putting this together with Premiere Pro, After Effects, whatever, try rendering it out at a larger size, 800 by 600, 1024 by 768. And if your final result is going to be 640 by 480, then you can downsize it and it actually looks a lot better. Um, sometimes you get flickering with point clouds and it, that really helps to minimize and reduce that, that flickering. It gives a really nice um, look. So in the default here when you set this up and make preview is going to be AVI. If you want to just go ahead and work with an AVI file, just hit create. It will, it will uh, create that uh, right away. Uh, I'm going to use custom file because I like to have uh, individual frames uh, rendered. So like PNG files or TIFF or JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and sit, say go ahead create. And it's saying, okay, well, where do you want to save this sequence file? I've got demo here. I, I've did this. I've done this once before, so um, I've got the files here. I'm just going to say, just to show you, I'm, if I call it crushed car, and I'm going to choose PNG, like that. Hit save. It asks me the uh, uh, the type of file that I want to save. I'm just going to use 24-bit, no problem. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to overwrite what I have already. And you'll see that uh, Max is going right ahead and rendering out the frames. And you, it does this very quickly. Um, if you were to try doing this uh, using the actual scan line or mental ray renders, it is possible. But depending on what is in the viewport and the number of points, um, it can be very time consuming. So several minutes to render out you know, even just a single frame. So at the moment now, it's already done. And if I go to my file here, 
and demo it, you'll see that I've got all the frames rendered out. And if I want to scroll through, uh, just using my mouse keys here, so it looks pretty good. And um, that's uh, basically it. Uh, again, very quickly, views, viewport background, click on that, files, choose your background, hit OK, and you change your viewport background. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Thank you.